Hello everyone, it's Friday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Obia Jilu Ubo and with me are the ladies. Akashat Nima Zaviri. How are you doing today? I'm fine, I'm fine. So yesterday I was sent a message that the guest called me Akashat. Oh. And if you call me Akashat, you probably went to school with me. Mm. Yeah, so maybe university in Nima, but most people called Akashat all through school. And that's my father's first name. Oh. Yes, so I thought she was from my school, but later I got a message. She's a friend of a professor in the U.S., uh, you know, so she probably calls me Akasha to her as well. But uh, today I have a shout out for a friend's dad who turned, is turning, who turned 70 yesterday. The party is going to happen oh. at their church on Sunday. Pastor um, Dr. Oluwafemi Olukoya. Uh -huh. It's father to my friend, my dearest, Mommy Gloria and Mommy David. Happy birthday, sir. From all of us, your children. Mm -hmm. All of us. Because he's always praying, For you always guys. reaching out. Yes, yes. Happy birthday, Happy sir. Happy birthday to him. Toby, loba, loba, Toby. Ah, is the soprano for me? I'm telling you. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank It's been a minute. We yes. Missed you. I mean, so this is my first show of the year. Yes. Oh, and it's yeah. such a delight to be here again. I mean, ah, I'm so happy to see everyone. Happy everyone see behind it. the camera, too. Yeah. I'm really, really excited. Um, so for this year, basically, I look forward to more opportunities. I look forward to owning my stage mm. because you know sometimes you just live in that self-doubt and you're like am i sure i'm qualified enough mm. for this thing but this year i'm going all out i'm owning it opportunities are coming i'm grabbing them yes so and i really look forward to an yes, amazing so. 2020 this year is a katapi year. <laughs> katapi i don't want to say what it is in english so that they don't come after me <laughs> madam fash <sighs> madam Madame, 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 2024 started on an excellent note. Mm. So it's been a lot of yes, 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 yes. I've enjoyed a lot of yes, yes, yes. And then um, I have a big project this year. Or let me say a number of big projects. But the biggest and first on my list is my teenage boot camp coming up in a few weeks. Oh, wow. Yes. Teenagers. Yes, please. A leadership okay. boot camp. Oh, that would be amazing. Strictly for teens and pre-teens. Mm. So we had the first edition last year. Please let us know so we can register our teens. Yes, so... <laughs> when is it? Exactly? When is it? Uh, March, March 22nd to 24th. Okay, okay. Yeah. That should be around the midterm, maybe? Yes, I'm sure. No, be not midterm, just before they get home, just before Easter. Oh, okay. And we've got some of the finest facilitators this year. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. There's this special. We are, we are listening already. Oh, we are listening. Oh, we, are listening. we have teenage, <laughs> preteens and teenagers. Oh, I'm good. Um, it's been a restful week for me. The producer decided that, ah, Madame BC, I work so hard. So please Excuse rest. Me. <laughs> so please I rest. <laughs> so I'm resting. You know, I know too. So next so week is going to be back to back. Rested. Yes, I, I really rested this period. So mm -hmm. I took up my swimming. I'll still have to um, find time to do my uh, tennis, lawn tennis, because I play as well. But um, I'm still trying to structure my time. I haven't really gotten a hang of it. But I'm excited about the training I'm going to be having. It's a workshop, goal setting, which is happening next Saturday. That's the 3rd of February, goal setting and vision boarding for manifestation with my dear coach and friend. She's, you know, manifestation queen and all that. I'm goal setting queen on one corner. So, and it's free. I decided to give back to the society doing this. And we just need 25 people. So you register, we screen, and then we get you. We just start the year giving back. Some of us will not register. <laughs> right, better register. <laughs> <laughs> better register. No, we'll just show. So is it for just a day? Uh, just for the, yeah, just okay. a day. So we'll get, uh, we'll get no, details. No, we have more coming oh. in the course yeah. of the year. We have retreats coming. The Waker. Mm. The Waker. Mm. We are waking mm. people up here. <laughs> we are. So let's take a short break. When we come back, we take the newspaper reviews. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We'll be starting the newspaper review with The Nation. Power supply worsens as generation drops to 3,134 megawatts. TCM blames gas shortage. 
30 megawatts coming from Kashimbila. Enugu community stalls multi-billion Naira project. Lagos to float airline build airports in Lekki. Katsina governor advocates state police. Rivers assembly arson, five cents to prison. Government's labor minimum wage talks for March. Why Supreme Court affirmed Fubara, Kefas, Aliyu victories. Aida Tiwa set to inaugurate Adelami. Presidency tackles Atiku over claim on NMPC's $3.3 billion loan. What stories do we have in the nation? So I have the major headline. <laughs> Our generation worsens across the country. It has dropped to 3,000. Um, 3,134 megawatts across the country, and the TCN noted that the allocation to the discos, which was um, 3,944 megawatts on Tuesday, rose marginally on Wednesday to 4,000, before it then dropped again drastically to 3,134 megawatts yesterday. Mm -hmm. They gave a statement, they talked to Yubo, plenty, plenty things. Go and read nation if you want all the details, but Coco is that we don't have light. Mm. But this has been a consistent, you know, Drop. decline. Yeah. Since the, um, this new administration, it's almost like the power ministry is not an active one. And I like that the administration has, you know, an assessment of each ministry's performance. So if truly there's an assessment, this is the one we used to measure it. Mm -hmm. What I am going through at home without, a, going without an alternative system that I have, would have, been, would have been disaster. Mm. Would have been a disaster because now we even ration what they get. So they don't get enough allocation. They then ration a day on, a day off, all of those insulting kind of power. And then, you know, it's annoying. And in the same vein, they declared a higher profit. And I'm wondering how, how <laughs> you know, we consistently, the, the, the um, grid has fallen, has, has collapsed too many times under this administration, under the minister, the uh, present minister. So you should. Sit up and check what is happening. Something has to be yeah. done. So, so the federal government said they will open talks with labor on the new minimum wage in March. Uh, this was uh, the information and National Orientation Minister Al-Haji Mohamed Idris said this yesterday. And he reiterated the President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's commitment to workers' welfare, urging the Nigerian Labor Congress and Nigerians to be patient with the administration. He spoke at the 21st Trust Dialogue and Presentation of 2023 African Award of the Year in Abuja. The dialogue with the theme, Tinubu's Economic Reforms, Gainers and Losers, uh, said it was organized by the Media Trust Group. And he, you know, highlighted the fact that the administration uh, is trying to mitigate the impact of the field subsidy removal. And, um, you know, he took us back to when Labour had said that they needed an increase in the minimum wage. And the federal government said they were going to be giving 25,000 Naira as a cushion uh, for you know, federal workers, which was later renegotiated to 35,000 Naira uh, to be paid for six months. Now, after six months, which will be ending in March, they will be having um, a meeting where they come together, all the stakeholders will come together and then find a way to now deliberate on the new minimum wage. So he said something, and I quote, however, it is important for Nigerians to understand the intention of President Tinubu to address the welfare and well-being of all Nigerians. I know it's not easy, but Nigerians will be better for it. And it's time to make the country right, you know. So let's see what happens in March. Let's see how much they would be deliberating to pay as minimum wage. What other stories do we have in the nation? Okay, so um, yesterday there was a Lagos West Senatorial District Town Hall meeting <laughs> that held in Balmoral Convention Center in Ikeja. And the governor was present, and one of the things he did at the conference was to give like an overview of his administration's progress. And at this meeting, he said that Lagos is to float an airline um, and to build the airport in Lekki. Hmm. And so we've heard this over and over again, and I think that it's really laudable of him to keep us um, aware of the plans that the government has, right? And one of the things also he also mentioned was that um, the Fort Mainland Bridge is to commence soon, although there are funding challenges currently. Mm. But he, he kind of like gave a brief overview of the projects that are ongoing and are to start um, at the district town hall meeting okay. yesterday. Do we have another story? No, please. Okay. Let's move on now to the punch.
Tinubunomics. Federal government differs, as NLC says, reforms killing Nigerians. Listening to IMF, World Bank has never helped Nigeria. NLC president tells Tinubu, president determined to make life better for citizens, says information minister. Customs sees 4 billion naira cocaine arms from South Africa. Tinubu approves 50 billion naira security vote for five northern states. Naira drops at parallel market closes 900 to a dollar official window. Nigeria, Morocco fast tracks talks on 30 billion, 30 billion dollar gas pipeline. Federal government releases funds for Second Niger Bridge, Lagos Ibadan Bypass. Mr. Ibu's son arrested for allegedly theft of 50 million Naira donation. U.S. court fines Nigerian blogger $50,000 for defaming MFM overseer. What stories do we have in okay. the park? So um, I have the major headline again. And the NLC president, um, Joe Ajero, yesterday at the 21st Daily Trust Dialogue in Abuja, tackled President Bola Metinumbu over his economic, what he termed economic hardship in the country. He based it on, you know, some of the policies, the cash crunch, the removal of subsidy, a lot of all those things that, you know, the policies that this present government is, you know, um, applying right now to our issues. And he says that they are not people-centric. They're not easing things for the people. Mm. Also present at that event was the Minister for Information and National Orientation, who, you know, uh, you know, went against what he said. He disagreed with him. He faulted his criticism. He said that the president, that Nigerians, was, he assured that we will soon start to see the benefits of the reforms that the president is doing. Also, the special advisor on information and strategy to the president, see, you know, um, was said that all the economic reforms that the president is doing were pro-Nigeria. But Joe Ajero insisted that, you know, following the advice of the World Bank, and some uh, and the um, in, in, or international bodies in deciding on policies for Nigeria will not help Nigeria. He said the cost of governance in Nigeria is um, 50 percent. By uh, sorry, he said the government that does not deliberately reduce the cost of governance in Nigeria by 50 percent is deceptive. He said that you know all of these policies that are say, uh, they are bringing on. Can, can be visibly seen to bring hardship on Nigerians. Mm. Sadly, I, this, I agree with um, the NLC president on, you know, heeding to advice from international bodies. I don't think they are focused on how we grow Nigeria. How we grow, yeah. I think their, their business is their business, how to make profit. So we're interest. constantly getting loans, yeah. servicing loan. Mm -hmm. Over a third mm -hmm. of our um, uh, budget every year goes to servicing loan. Obviously, whoever is pushing us in that direction, He's not thinking well, about you know. us. Yeah, but so do we, we have should, to listen to them? Yeah, so they can make which their is why recommendations. Say, don't yes. listen. Don't even take their recommendations. Mm. Do your policies from a Nigeria view. Perspective. Perspective. Every time Nigeria first, nothing else mm. before you know we arrive at those policies. And hopefully we'll see results. Okay. So I have the FG Morocco to fast track EID for 30 billion gas pipeline project. <clears throat> So I think um, in 2022, there was a meeting between um, Nigeria and Morocco in Abuja um, to help all of our fuel issues before the subsidy was even removed. But there's a need, there's been talks this January to see how that can be fast-tracked, how they can create money. So they had a meeting yesterday where both parties emphasized the strategic importance of the project to the two countries. And... Um, well, it's a lot of money, 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 billion, billion, billion. We just hope that this pipeline that is planned to go through Bene, Togo, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia, Sierra Leone, a host of countries all the way to Spain, I hope mm. it works in our favor and they are able to conclude it. So the plan is to conclude it before June. We hope it happens. Yeah. All right, let's take a short break. When we come back, we continue the newspaper reviews. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back. We're still reviewing The Punch. Who else has a story? Okay, um, okay, go ahead. Okay, 
So the Nigerian police force on Thursday said he had arrested a son and adopted daughter of Mr. John Okafo, uh, popularly known as uh, Mr. Ibu, for allegedly stealing the alien actors 15 million naira, being proceeds of donations to cater for the Thespians alien health. You know, he was in the um, social media space. Yes. yes. Well, while they were um, requesting for funds to be donated for his treatment. So the force through the first criminal investigation and intelligence department at Lagbong in Ikoi, a Lagos state said, uh, Onyebuchi Okafo and Jasmine Okekegu, uh, the ones that allegedly conspired to commit the crime. You know that um, from October 2023, when it was shown that the actor had to undergo about five surgeries and they were seeking further uh, treatment abroad, they had to request for donations from the actor's fans. But the FCID, in a statement signed by the Public Relations Officer Mayi Guamina, said the arrest followed a petition received from Diamond Waves a Law on behalf of the actor's wife, Stella Okafo. And he alleged that uh, two of the sons of Mr. Ibu conspired with his adopted daughter, Jasmine, to defraud their father. That uh, when they carried out investigations, they realized that they hacked his phones, uh -huh. reinstalled his app that was already deleted, and moved the 55 million away from his account. They also planned to relocate with the money because you know they had to look through their phones and see their engagements and chats. They realized that they had gone to registry. So I think two of them falsified, you know, just carried out a marriage uh, ceremony at the registry. That's um, uh, just for the response. Chioma Okekeago and Nyebuchi Daniel Okafo. They had a sham marriage at the Koyi registry uh, and they got their visa ready in preparation to so Japan I'll wait for their, their father's money. Mm -hmm. When Mr. Ibu was sick, this back and forth between mm -hmm. both of them from Kept the wife camp accusing the children's okay, camp. Yeah. Children, in fact, I heard that she was an adopted daughter during that interview. Yeah, yeah we didn't know. I wait to hear from the lawyers as well. Wow. Okay, so um, US court finds Nigerian blogger. $50,000 for defaming MFM general overseer. Wow. And so this um, blogger, vlogger, Funke Asheku, had gone on our YouTube page to say some things about the MFM general overseer, Dr. Daniel Olukoya. And because she's in the US, three other pastors in the US belonging to, um, that were pastors of MFM, now, um, so brother took her to court. Took her to court. Wow. And in the court, there was an, a unanimous verdict stating that she was actually guilty. And so they slammed her $50,000. And in her response, she was saying that she had not even met those three people before, the three pastors. Mm. And so what rights do they have? Something like that. That they don't even know her personally, so why would they? And she was very, very particular about the fact that there was a woman among the three pastors who was also among them and she was like, how can a woman take her to court for defaming somebody because she spoke against sexual assault? But well, gratefully, is it gratefully? She, she, gratefully. If she, if she was fine, she couldn't substantiate mm, what she said in the yeah. videos. So yeah, and no it was even a unanimous verdict. Whether like, she was a woman, she was a wing, exactly. she was a bird. All right, let's move on to so the Daily Sun. Mango killings, defense headquarters fumes, invites can leadership, others over allegation against personnel. Ohanez slams security agencies over extortion on Southeast roads. I hold the Sun Awards in high esteem, Yahaya Gumbi governor. Tinubu owes us an explanation on NMPCL's $3.3 billion emergency loan. It's according to Atiku. Lagos considers setting up airline set to begin construction of airport. Planned relocation of MDA's Northern Senators clash. Supreme Court affirms governor's, Governor Kefas Aliyu Fubara's election. Enugu AFDB partner on investment others. FCT kidnapping. Military deploys special forces to come Abuja forest for terrorist bandits. Police rescue 14 victims, kill abductor, injure scores. Insecurity. State police remains panacea, says Katsina governor. What stories do we have in the sun? Yes, I have the FCT and the um, released them um, kidnapped persons. According to the FCT police command, they rescued 14 kidnapped um, persons at the Ukia village in Nasarawa State, bordering the FCT. And these victims were rescued by the anti-kidnapping anti units and the Rubochi Divisional Police Headquarters 
in the continued fight against kidnapping on Wednesday. The police um, PRO said um, the hostages were rescued on hot and they were released and reunited with their families. Also, the defense headquarters said it has deployed special forces to some of the hot spots in the FCT and across the country mm. to conduct um, targeted operations to wipe out bandits, terrorists, and other criminal groups terrorizing the peace of the nation. They said um, the defense media operations um, director, Edward Buba, said this is... Um, he said he listed some of the hot spots to include the Kashu Forest, Kwaku, Gombe, Gadoro, um, Tukuba in Kuje area, another uh, Kau, Igu, Tukul, um, Tukolu, Gaba, Zuma 1, Zuma 2, um, Shere, Ma, uh, Pape, Jikoko, and Bega areas of Abuja, wow. Buaria area as well, the Buari FC um, Council area where the major kidnapping of the girls that were killed happened. Mm. And so they are presently, you know, releasing serious, taking strong actions against that. They're also combing all the forests and surrounding the FCT and areas um, surrounding the FCT bordering other states as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I have a story. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I have the story of um, Governor Yahaya of um, Gombe State who got... The award for the governor of the year, son governor of the yeah, year. The year of Kogi State and the Gombe no, no, State. No, it was Gombe, not okay. Kogi. Oh, okay. Gombe Dugara, that's his name. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. and um, he's a visionary governor. Well, um, the MD of Sun and his management team, a couple of people went to Abuja to give him that award yesterday. Meanwhile, um, he was one of the nominees on the 9th of January, so they gave good reasons for um, giving him the award, giving him, crowning him as the son governor of the year. So I want to list the one in education. I, I particularly like that. It says, in the education sector, your administration initiated and executed the construction of over 234 new classroom blocks across 80 schools in the state. You also renovated 190 classroom blocks across 47 schools to ensure that there's conducive learning. And then there's so much for um, the farmers as well, so much on economic reforms in Gombe State. And... His response to it was also very humbling. He dedicated the award to Gombe State and his indigent. So we, oh, we hope we have good governance, sweet. get into other parts of Nigeria, and we have lots of Yakubu Dugaras to celebrate in this year, 2024. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Do you have a story? Yes. Go ahead. So thousands of Christians in Kano pray for the peace of Nigeria. And so they started a weekly prayer yesterday in Kano State by the five blocks of the Christian Associ Association of Nigeria. That's the Kan. And the five blocks include Catholics, CCN, Pentecostals, Equa, and OIC. So those are the five blocks of the can. And the, the meeting started yesterday, the prayer started yesterday, and it was led by the chairman of the association and the bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Kano, John Maza Inring. And one of the things they said was that there are lots of um, um, issues in the state, kidnapping, bandits, and all that, so it's required for them to come together to pray for the peace of Kano State and Nigeria as a well. whole. Mm, that's a good one. While the religious leaders are praying, the leaders should the be doing leaders. the work. Yeah. So the vice president of Ahanez Ndibo, Chief Damian Okeke, uh, condemned the increasing roadblocks across um, south, the states in the southeast. He said proceeds from the roadblocks were mostly extortions, enough to construct Ted Niger Bridge in the region. He spoke yesterday at the 2024 General Assembly of the Association of Past Presidents General of Anambra State, APAS, of the Association of Anambra State Town Union, ASATU. And he said that ASATU was founded when the people in the state suffered harassment, intimidation, and extortion during the military administration. And one of the reasons they founded it was to help, um, you know, their citizens to, you know, um, avoid some of those uh, maltreatments that was happening to them and at the time that happened they said um, during the military regime that the Igbo had no voice to speak for themselves but that association was able to help them and the military head at the time also listened but now from Onicha to Ekulobia you encounter not less than 10 roadblocks and you know today it said the roadblocks have increased to their houses nobody's talking the level of extortion there it's just so much. And you can't even imagine how much they make from those roads. That they keep saying that they are mounting those roadblocks to fight crime. 
However, they are not arresting anybody. They've not been able to catch anybody mounting those roadblocks. I took this story last week as well. And for it to still make the uh, papers this morning, that means it's something that the government needs to look into. Do we need as much roadblocks in the southeast as we have? Let's move on now. I think this will likely be the last paper. To so the vanguard. Plateau. Neighbors rejoiced while they burnt our houses. Survivor. Edo Governor Paul. No quarrel between Oshomole and I, says Ize Yamo. I can't be intimidated out of this race. Shaibu. AFCON 2023. President Tinubu urges Super Eagles to change tactics. So I like Eagles. Buhari's team left economy worse than met it, says Media Trust Chair. Federal government Morocco intensified talks to fast track gas pipeline project. Fort Mainland Bridge construction begins March, says Songolu. Lagos Mall's investment in airline operations. Aborted three years voyage. Tories call for probe. Why some CBN departments should be relocated to Lagos. This is according to Sanusi. So, what stories do we have in the vanguard? <laughs> okay, so I have this AFCON 2023 story where the president, Bola Ahmed Tinobu, has ordered the Super Eagles to change their tactics and fire on all cylinders. And so this was made known by the Minister of Sports, John Owen Eno. He said that he had gone to the presidential villa for something else. And so the president called him and said, these guys, I watched their match. And one of the things he said was that they managed, he wasn't so impressed with what they played, even though they're off the group stages, but he, he wishes that they can change their tactics. So the minister was then telling the players on a Zoom call on Wednesday night that, you see, the president watches your matches, so you guys have to sit up. So back up. Right? Yes, it was, it was so fun to, yeah, to, to read. It's not so apprehensive of the Cameroon, Nigeria, possible. Mm. Yes. The thing is giving all of us like this. Yes. I mean, oh, and this is a time where we women, to all of us, were watching. Yes, Everybody so we are praying. praying. This is where yes. they need our prayers, our support. Thank you, ladies. That's all we can Much take in the newspaper reviews. When we come back, we go to our hot topic. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So in this segment, we'll be looking at stress as one of the issues affecting marriages and relationships and how to handle them because it's been identified as a common marriage problem that couples face more than once in their relationships. What are your thoughts on this? You can join the conversation and call us on 081-076-416-79 or 09024-163-440. Or you can tweet us at TVC connect using the hashtag your view on TVC. So let's look at stress. Um, we are all married here. And I know that from time to time, we face different challenges in marriage, uh, challenges from uh, different amounts of stress in different aspects of life. So uh, you're working and then you have a child and it's the first time another human being is coming into the equation. You are struggling, how do I handle Oga, how do I handle this newborn baby, then the school run starts, how do I take them to credit, how do I pick them up, you're managing your work on one hand. So we, we face different levels of stress, but I'd like to know how have you been able to manage the sort of stress that came into your marriage? Did you have a conversation with your partner? Is this something you people realized it was happening? Sometimes we don't even know that stress is happening till it sort of breaks the relationship. How did you quickly recognize that what we're going through right now is nothing new, it's just stress, but we can overcome it? Who would like to start? <laughs> Toby. Uh, okay. Okay. Fash. <laughs> give us, give us, give us. <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you, BC. Beautiful topic, I must say. Uh, stress can happen in any way. So, let me share my own experience. This January, hmm, I went through what I last saw like eight, nine years ago. It's simple, low, but when I tell you, mm. women can, I, can relate and say, wow. So I've had a help in the last eight years. Mm. And I had one that's been with me for like two years. 
she asked to go in December. And I felt, okay, you didn't go last year, so go. When she was going, she said, okay, mommy, this is my tea fair. So it's a salary, which I gave to her happily. Mm. She went, and then she was supposed to come back, say, 9th of January. So she calls to say, mommy, I'm coming back tomorrow. And then I was so happy. I said, okay, I'm going to send you money again. Mm. She didn't ask her out of excitement. Oh, oh you're coming. <laughs> I sent another one. And then she calls to say, mommy, I saw what you sent. Since I saw what you sent, that's the last. You heard from her? I heard from her. Whoa. Now, nobody is saying what happened. People are just saying, um, um, have you heard from her? Is she fine? Because this girl is sweet. If you see her, you, you'll be 80% sure she's my younger sister. Sometimes I just notice all my creams and everything. She would have taken it. And, and when, when, you're, when, you're, when you're trying to accuse her, you just can't do that because mm. she does so much for me. Like, she manages my yeah. life. She will say, Mommy, you're wearing the shoes today. Uh, Mommy, don't you think you should have called this person? You remember you said, so you were listening on my call. So that she was no good. More. She was her job. good. And the mm. children love her. Oh. My family, everybody knows her. I, I mean, my extended family, whenever we go home, like we're going to Osho and everything. When they see her, they're like, oh, peace, hugs, nobody, you know, they, they help you. So, okay, how are you? But they do this to receive her. So I, I, I can't even get it out of my mind. And so she says she's not coming. And then I remember that I have a four-year-old. I forgot, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I remember that I have a four-year-old. I remember the kind of shuttle I run. You won't believe two days ago, it was my driver's horn when he was honking. That was what woke us up. And everybody flew my first son, my daughter. You know? so, so, so it can be in any way. Personally, I don't believe um, women should hold on to this super, super yeah, girl man. approach. I mean, you want to grow your career. You want healthy, um, well, uh, responsible children. You want to keep your family close to you. How many would you do? Ah, it's a lot. For me, as a woman, <laughs> that's where the stress starts from. I'll come back to you on how you yeah. managed it, right? But let's come to Toby. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this? Well, stress. You know, before I used to think stress was, uh, if you are stressed, you must, you must die there. Like, mm. everything was shut down. But I think that over time, I've learned to cope with stress. And one of the things I basically majorly do is to say to myself that I cannot come and go and kill myself. Any work that cannot be done, at that point remains undone. If you come to my house and maybe there is, it's maybe littered and all that, and you're kind of like complaining, ah, I don't mind though, do you want to help us, <laughs> <laughs> right? So for me, I kind of like shut my eyes mm. from the things that are not working in the house. And I see that everybody's happy, you're lively, or oh, I'll embrace that at the moment. And another thing I do also with my husband, when we see that we're stressed, once the children are asleep, so we have two, one five-year-old, one two-year-old, mm -hmm. we sneak out of their presence to just spend like alone two, three time. minutes alone. Mm. And it's, we realize that <clears throat> we're like, ah. so we still love ourselves like this, right? Mm -hmm. And that kind of like refreshes us. So even if it's house chores, we're doing it together and it just makes the whole place um, a bit better. If you just they sit down for kitchen, just they just with me, I'm the one washing plates. But I see that. But that support For the fact there. that it's there. It's present. It just makes me I'll be washing, I'll be happy, you know. And I think that that's also beautiful when it is that when you're stressed, take your partner and um, involve that person in the activities. I know not all homes are like mine. Maybe say the husband go go 5 a.m., come back 10 p.m. <laughs> so please understand your circumstances and the peculiarities yes, you know, our of yes. your home. <laughs> then another thing before, one of the things I used to do was that if I'm upset, I go to do everything by myself. Mm -mm. I'm not going to talk to anybody. Oh, but wow. I realize that the stress will be like times one billion. Mm. So when I'm upset, I don't. I just let it go immediately, so that he can also embrace responsibilities. And I see that play out with a lot of women when it is that they are trying to prove a point. Now them go they buy. Now them go they do all the work and all that. And the husband like. She did not cuckoo ask me, mm. right? So I think that when we're able to let go of those grudges, because the person is your partner for life. So those are the ways by which I've, I've seen stress and handled it in I beg my marriage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my, my own case is peculiar. I run a very small home. Mm -hmm. And I've always done things myself. For 13 years of my marriage, I had no help in the house. So a woman. I do my thing myself. Yes. I, ah. I so pride myself. Okay. <laughs> I, do, I do everything myself. Run my kids, run my home. There's nothing in my house 
that I cannot remember from the corner of my brain where it is. Because mm. wow. I used to do it all myself. Wow. And when we got married, myself and my husband sat down. I said, I don't want somebody living in my house. I'm too loose privately to have somebody just walking around, you know. So we agreed that you do half, I will do half. Over time, before we reach four years, the guy has forgotten his half. Hey, well. All the half are fall on my head. <laughs> so he agreed the whole. He agreed the whole. <laughs> and my husband, the things I do for 24 hours, if you were to do them in two hours, it will be done. Mm. House chores. Wow. He's fast He's like grounded. that. He's grounded like that. Mm. But he won't do them. He's focused on, I have work. Then he decided to move career-wise, grow career-wise. And small, 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 small. I just said, saying, I will have this talk. And let him just focus on his job for now. Till the talks never happened. Mm. And then fights happened. Stress. Oh. As in, I became an opposite of myself. Yes. Mm. Wow. If you meet me on a normal day, I'm joking. If you are having a bad day, I'm laughing. I'm bringing joy. I'm, that's me. I find every reason to be a comedy yeah. person. But in my house at that time, I would just keep looking at him like this. Babes. That babes that he said. Uh, oh, I've responded okay. like three, four times. My name is Nima. Please. <laughs> It's stress in the yeah. on the edge. And yeah. over time, I just kept thinking, you're so insensitive, you're so this, you're so that. And the sacrifices I said I was making, because we didn't talk about it, it didn't show. Part time, I would just be in a bad place. But my neighbors, amazing neighbors, once in a while, they would send my sweetheart, my own Lola, to me. I'm going to ask mommy before she needs help. She'll come in, she'll keep coming, she'll help my kids. And so this year, no, in 2022, we now got a maid who will come in, help them come in and clean go, and go clean and go and all that. So it took a lot of house chores off of me and I got used to something I did not experience in a long time. Mm. My husband particularly insisted after one fight that Nima, you need help now yeah. because I can't do this thing. You yeah. cannot just become, you know. And so I got back to my old self, playful, yeah. never tired and all of that. Then Oinola goes to school and it's the same time help decided to bail. Ew. So the help has never been pulling her weight really mm. but because i'm someone i can say okay go 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 i'll take it over i'll do it i'll do it that i will i will you know i do it for her so she thought i was her replacement so she can just go mommy i'm not feeling so well but, you know i said don't worry i'll handle it i'll handle it mm. so i was missing on in lola because she had to go to school the girl finally said no i'm going to do campus school i begged her to do off campus mm. but she said no campus is what she wants. And so she left. I was in that place missing her, just relieving, you know, the joy she brought to my life. You know, someone you need to, someone who is not family, who mm. becomes family. Mm. You don't worry about anything. I can be talking to you. We can all be sitting here and Ola has caught my eye. And she mm. knows what to She'll do. just go and do you her know? stuff. I love the way she handles. And I saw my kids are safe around her. Those were some of the reasons I didn't want to have someone. I wanted someone... I don't want someone I'll be guessing whether my kids are safe with, mm. you know, so I didn't get help yeah. for long. Wow. And so she left school. I was just, for school, I was missing her. And then my help side to do all those nonsense, disappearances. And one of that, I said, no, I'm not your backup. Hmm. I had her sit down and give her a strong conversation the way she has never seen me before. Hmm. I, said, I am not your backup. If you fail to show up for work each day, I'll deduct your money. They won't know. To be they on performance like basis. Pro rating. She, she didn't like it. Mm, and I said, like if you break things again, you spoil my things, I will you pay for it. You pay for it. Mm. No more money. It might be no more. Mm -mm, it will not work. Now you have to be either on top of your job or not in the job. Mm -hmm. She just looked at me and disappeared. She did not, I've not seen her since then. Yeah. When we come back, we'll Yeah, let's take a short break now. When we come back, the conversation continues. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We are still talking stress. You were rounding up your so, conversation. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was rounding up. So she had to go. She left. And I went back to doing... The first thing is reorganize it all. Take an inventory of everything. In the house. Put things back in order. I did it all by myself again. And I'm feeling like, you know, we're all wired differently. Mm. This is really me, you know? One thing I never even allowed her to, to do early when she joined was cook. You know, I like to cook for my family. Mm -hmm. And every meal that I cook is what they will eat in yeah. the house. But over time, I got uh, ill, I fell on bed rest, and I allowed her. And so I started eating <coughs> someone else's food. So first thing first, I started cooking again. Felt, 
let me be doing it by myself. But the truth is, we are humans and mm. we break down. Mm -hmm. And my husband is still in that place of somebody will do it and will just be gisting. Yes. And so while I'm doing it, he's either waiting for me or he will not join me in the heat. <laughs> he will wait. So that <laughs> when I come out, I say, I want gist. I said, please, hold your gist. <laughs> so on Thursday, he just looked at me and said, I'm, I'm very appreciative of all that you do for the family. That's oh, sweet. Somebody. Sweet. That's I'm sweet. grateful for it, and I'm sorry that I'm not doing it. And that just made me uh, super power again. Uh, yes, we that's something again. Yeah. you. <laughs> Let's take this call from Blessing. Blessing from Kano. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm here. I agree with you. have been doing a very good Thank you. So, talking about the stress is something. The line is breaking. Yes, I guess the network is bad. So, hmm. I've had different levels of stress in marriage, right? And what sort of saved me was the fact that I knew my strengths and my weaknesses very fast. I'm a very self aware human being. I know that I cannot come and die, neither can I come and when kill myself. It's... If you burden me with so much housework, you won't get the best of me. You won't get the other aspect of me that makes the marriage interesting. So I said, oh, guy, you have to choose who. which of them. Should I be slaving away? I love to cook, so cooking wasn't considered stress for me. I can be cooking four different soups on the burner at the same time, and I will not make mistakes. Like, I love it. It's something I do. So that is not the kind of stress I'm talking about, right? The stress I was talking about was washing... I don't like to wash, sweeping, mopping, cleaning the house. I don't love to, I don't like to do those. So I said, Oga, we have to have an arrangement. If I use all of my energy and do all of these house chores, you know you cannot touch my night because I'm tired. And my tired is tired. Yes. I will fling your hand. You say, eh, no, 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 no. Let's recalculate. <laughs> rearrange it. <laughs> Let's rearrange. Do we get somebody? Because initially when we started the conversation, you know this, I don't want somebody to live with us. I don't want, I want this close knit. <laughs> I say, brother, you will choose. Should I do all the work? Then it's like once in a month, I'll be looking at you because I need time to rest. He say, ah, no, do we get somebody? So we got someone and that started. Then when the baby came, the person had to leave. I was so stressed. I was doing a nine to five at the time. I wake up, my kids are very gummy gummy, so they want mommy's body at all times. So I wake up like 4 a.m. to quickly bathe before the child wakes up, my first daughter. When she opens her eyes, I can't take my bath. So I wake up very early, take my bath, then I bathe her, feed her, you know. For that two weeks that there was no help. Even the little baby, oh yeah. God, I still ask for forgiveness. She heard it. Everybody knew I was under. I couldn't handle the stress. I was constantly cranky. I was constantly shouting. I was like, it wasn't me. I just knew that some, I can't do this alone. I need help so that I can focus. And my job was intensive, being a classroom teacher at the time. Uh, and we have to do lesson notes. We have to do lesson plans. We have to do this. We have to do that. Then when I come home in the evening, I was alone. I'm now cook for a guy, a guy who doesn't eat out. So this trust was just much for a young woman that loved to pepe herself. I said, no, I can't deal with this. I didn't have to even say much, but when he saw my mood and he knew he could not come near me, he said, please, call a company. Let them get us somebody. That was how I was able to go away from that. But let me take this call before I continue. We have Blessing. I think she's back from Kano. Good morning, Blessing. Good morning, my favorite baby. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for this. So talking about stress, it's really something to talk about because um, we ladies, we go through a lot. And when we open up, talk to our spouse about this, it's going to really eat the stress. I remember when I first got married, I was doing this superwoman, good housewife, come back, I've done this, I've done that. Then one day I just thought I had nothing. This man does not know that he needs help. So sometimes I'll just say that he used to do this for me. He used to do that. Sometimes I'll be expecting to give information and I saw that he would not even think about it. I just think I can't see that this thing is not done. Mm. 
Oh, I think she's gone. So um, we moved away from that. We grew into now the kids were now many. Mm. And Oga likes his house to be clean. He wants to walk in from work every day and everywhere is organized, everywhere is arranged, the food is set, blah, 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 blah. And then he walk in, the TV is upside down, everything is scattered. And he's like, no, 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 I can't because I say, we have young children. Let's not die before our time. He will scatter the house. It's normal. We have to have that conversation. I say, it's normal. Children will scatter. I cannot constantly be chasing them. So they were so young to tidy. So it's definitely the helps that will do the tidying. And they, other, they have other things to do. They also support me in the kitchen and do other things. So I can't constantly be taking, I say, please, for now, as we get older, we will arrange the house better. But what I did for him was to make sure that his own room it's constantly, yeah, so before he gets back by 4 p.m., my work is more flexible, so I'm home most of the time. He gets back, we've cleared his room, I've locked it so that nobody goes there to put popcorn on the bed or anything. <laughs> and then he walks, from the gate he's shouting. He had to learn to reduce the shouts because he has younger kids. Then when he gets into his own sanctuary, it's sane for him to eat and, you know, rest. So I just found my way. And also I threatened him. I said, brother, you're not so older than me now. I'm expecting this. Yes, you're not so older than me. You want me to wear out. You want me to get old. You want me to be uh, looking like your mommy. If I do this too much work, I will wear out now. He said, no, 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 no. We don't want you to wear out. So it was me finding ways to just ensure that I don't do more than I have the capacity to. Now, I appreciate people like Nima who have the capacity to do all of that, but I don't have it. And imagine if I had been in a place where I'm not allowed to free up my time for some rest. How would that marriage would be working now? It may not even be working, right? I may have said, okay, let's be going. No, I can't deal with this number of stress. So for me, it's about understanding who you are and what you're capable of taking and also learning to take rest. Mm -hmm. We don't take rest, yes. We don't take rest in this part of the world. Sometimes I used to hide in my toilet and for like an hour because I don't want to hear those children screaming. So I just I hide there. Kids. I love mm. their noise. I okay. miss my daughter that is not at all right now. Mm. I raised my daughter to be my backup. Mm. At four, she would do... If my daughter makes a bed, you'll be shocked. Wow. At four. Put her to skill learning and all of that very early. You know, but Nima, let me pause you on this. I'll come back to you. Uh, let's have Samuel. We have a caller. Samuel. Good morning, Samuel. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. This is my first time caller. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I really want to say a very big thank you to all our ladies, our mommies, yeah? YK, Morayo. Thank you for doing a good job. Hello? We can hear you. Go ahead. Thank you, too, okay. for appreciating yeah. us. Also, um, to this new topic today, I really want to say women are trying. It's not easy. They need help. So, um, I would like them to, uh, the, the husbands, the men, to also support them, maybe to get the help for them as well, because they are doing a lot. Even the men, when the men go to work, saying, like, coming back in the night, saying, ah, what are you doing? What have you been doing all day? Mm. I don't like that question. Ah, so you were saying something, yes. yes. <laughs> so, but I cannot achieve perfection. Mm. Me, Nima, used to be as a child. I didn't even want to do house chores. But what I don't like, I don't like to cook, I like to eat. I don't like to <laughs> clean, I like a clean house. Wow. So when I got married, I just looked at it that if you don't do it, it who will, who will? Done. it will be undone and my husband used to be available to do but now he's not available it's not like he's deliberately you know okay. just not doing but he's not available and he's also gotten used to anima would sort it ah, <laughs> if i are looking for hello nima i need connect nima you know <laughs> nima has it all and all of those kind of things so you know people over time will get to that point now i'm dealing with a, so my little boy who cannot be like my daughter he's mm. just not willing to be Mommy, we get it. This morning, we had a major clash. Wow. And you know my boy is wired like we, we thinks in English. <laughs> so it was, I, I shouted him. I really gave it to him. Hot. Even got injured. I said, get, get out of him. I gave it to him. And the guy got into school. But I hadn't thought of him. Because the way he's wired, mm. two of them are two different people. If it was my daughter, I can always apologize in the evening. Yeah. But my son, he will have a bad day if I don't oh. apologize. So I had to call him. And they passed the phone. I said, I'm sorry I shouted that. I am not happy with no. you. <laughs> I said, you go, Ajebota. I said, I said, okay, I'm sorry that I shouted, but I'm not sorry that I had to do that. Mm -hmm. That I, I'm, the way I did it is why I'm sorry. 
not what, that I had to do it, yeah. but you need to start pulling your weight. Yesterday night, I, saw, I told him, I said, you're inconsiderate. I didn't think he would understand the meaning. Are Somebody saying, that thinks in English? Yeah, he says, are you saying I'm not considerate? I said, no, I said, you're inconsiderate. I tried, tried to play word games. He said, no, you're saying I don't consider. I said, ah, sorry, since you understand what I mean, stop scratching, stop, you know. Your sister, should, I'll just tell her I need to get to my room. My room is made. Mm. I, if I tell you to do my room, while you're doing it, you're turning it upside down. You know, I just try to have that talk. So sometimes the stress is that I don't have a perfect setting. Mm. So we just make room <coughs> as it goes. Yeah. If you come to my house on a day, sometimes in the morning on a weekend, my day doesn't start early on a week. <coughs> it starts early on a weekday. So at 5.30 yesterday, I already started mopping. But if you come on a weekday, on the weekend, I might mm. be sleeping till then. I'm about watching a movie, mm. you know. So I, I allow myself certain levities as well. Yeah. So, be. so one of the things I picked from both of this conversation is the fact that we should um, understand our reality part time. Mm. So for you, at some point, you could do all of it. Your husband was available. And I think that for a lot of women that may watch this show and then go and tell their husbands that today we are getting the help. We must. <laughs> you must I understand. If your income cannot... Yeah. Um, take it at this time. We must brace up mm. to the reality, yeah. right? Okay. And I think that, okay, so for a lot of women that feel that this work is too overwhelming and would say, I'm the one doing all Everything. the work, <clears throat> there are also roles of the man. But one of the things I've learned from my own marriage is that we shouldn't assign roles as this is what a, a man's task or this yeah, is a woman's yeah, task. Yeah. So for me, you know, if it's just two of us in the house trying to sort things out, I would be the one person that would wash the bathroom, bend down and do everything. And when you're thinking about it, it sounds like a, a, muscular, mm. a, a masculine. masculine job, right? But you, my husband is the kind of person that would stand with the plates and wash the plates. Mm -hmm. And people would be like, ah, ah, okay, alone for with your husband that is washing plates. I say, auntie, when I'm washing the toilet, mm. you don't see, right? So I think that we should also understand that the fact that your spouse steps in <coughs> to help you in a task doesn't mean that he's less. He steps in to help himself. Isn't that our marriage? Thank you, because I have. <laughs> I Nobody is helping help anybody. Help point help point get in. Yeah. You see, you know, I have to help you. I have to help you. We are going to do it. No, not help you. You are not helping yourself. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we continue this conversation and then more calls and messages. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Still on this conversation of stress management in relationships and marriage. Fash, yes, what so have you got for us? Okay, so um, I want to speak for the men. I feel um, when it comes to women, like I shared my experience, the chores are a major stress trigger. Mm. Well, there are others for the men that we haven't spoken about. Yes. But before we even go into it, I want to also say what helped me this time because I and my husband have decided we're not bringing help anymore. Because okay. uh, we saw the negative, um, the downside on our older children, mm. the 13 and the 11-year-old. You know, these days, uh, when you ask them to do something, they yeah. feel so Rumbling. bad. My daughter yeah. will say, Mommy, mm -hmm. did you really plan to have a daughter? <laughs> hey, well, Mommy. Is it that you don't love me so much? <laughs> Mommy, I just noticed these days, you're always on the edge. Yes. I say, okay, sit down. So if somebody is supposed to do this in both of us, should it be you or should mommy. it be me? If I do this, 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 how do you want me to feel? And then she goes, okay, Mommy, I'm truly sorry. I do understand. Because truly is a new reality for them. Mm. And my husband helped us to bring it to light. So we had a family meeting, including that four-year-old that scatters what we have arranged. <laughs> we had a meeting. And my husband said, I don't want to lose my wife. Well, I cannot be nursing anything. No. I'm begging all of you. I'm begging you first. Then I'm coming to you if you don't listen. Mm. You know? And that did it. Because when I wake them up, I go downstairs to go and make breakfast. By the time I come back, they would have gone to sleep. Ah, but when their daddy back. stayed over, one of the times their daddy stayed over, he just said, Babata, I'm You know this guy, I'm clearing my truth. Pium, Babato Ba got up. Babato, everybody. <laughs> just one person, everybody got up. So I have to tell you that, hey, come and do your magic focus. All these shout, shout. They say, mommy, you shout. Mommy, let us go. So it's important that there's an understanding between the, the two, mm. the couple, and then the children are also brought in so everybody can see from a very clear perspective. Mm. But speaking for the men, I work in a school space, and I feel for men who are under pressure, um, when they are unable to pay school fees. Mm, that's one, financial one, one, one stress. Par one parent actually brought his laptop to me and the head of school. 
When he brought the laptop, we're just looking at him. Sir, oh God, we said, may you pay. He brought a laptop. I said, no, this will be, you know, in my, in my civil whatever space, whenever we are unable to meet up, we have to drop something. So we, oh, so, so, like collateral. So I, like collateral. Oh. I, I felt the depth of pain and I said, sir, tell us when it's convenient for you. I mean, this is too much. Like, mm -hmm. I could see through him and I could just imagine what would be going on at home. Yeah. You know, so, so many women do not understand when their men are unable to provide what they need, not what they want. Mm. And that puts a lot of strain. I see friends, I hear people do go into all sort of stuff just because they want to, they want to appear to their in-laws as responsible. So mm. I think stress in that regard, um, women, we should talk to ourselves. We shouldn't always base our lives on what is happening. Social media, I mean, is, we all know it's not, it's not the ideal place to go and pick your, your best uh, match from. We also know that even when you have a sister, you know, people say, my sister got married four years after me. My friend got married five years after me. When did my sister's husband get a job? You know, all of those comparisons put a lot of stress mm. in the marriage. And when men feel, hey, I'm not going to stay here and allow you to choke me, they're also people's mm. children, so even when they're men. You go into economic stress. You know, I said stress... Yeah. Cuts. Different ways. Cuts across, yeah, it cuts yeah. across different angles. It's just understanding at the point that your and stress... economic stress is not peculiar to... Yeah. To just to men. Gender. gender. Yes. 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 But, but, parents, yeah, but I want to ask. So most times the people I see that are basically stressed are those who micromanage everything. Ah. Yes. That they don't the rest. They, they choose to do everything because in their head, if I don't do it myself, I will not get the joy... It will not be done properly, so it must be me. So are we actually putting the stress on ourselves, or can we relax a bit and groom other people to, to take charge, to do something so that we leave up time to do other more important things? So that, mm -hmm. Because it, it, what you are saying is related. It's you I'm talking like to. I say you are talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> like say I'm talking this to me. Entering you. You know, he's entering me. You know, we, what if you what if those you've groomed have to go? Mm. Reality of my present, my January eight was that all the people that I have groomed and I've rested on had to, to do go. life. They have mm. to live life. My sweet darling, you know, has to go. She has to live her life. She has to go to school. My daughter has to go to school, and I'm left with the one I refuse to groom. We're grooming ourselves right now. <laughs> You, reality is that everything can be perfect part mm. all time. Okay. So there's, there's a saying that I wanted, to, to, I wanted to say to you that if you want it done, you do it yourself. That's a saying I had growing up. I went to an all-girls school. Mm -hmm. If you want it done well, do it yourself. If you want use your standard, meet yeah. it. So I run life like that. But that doesn't mean I don't understand partnerships. Mm. So if I actually do break down, I know I can find one of my neighbors that I, I will talk to I'll come support and I will you. see help. They always offer the help anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take this call from Okweyemi from Alagbado. Good morning, Okweyemi. Good morning. I'm a first-time caller. Welcome to the show. I have a lot of first-time callers. You. I really love the conversation today. Then I want to say that I used to be like that. So I want to do everything by myself. I got to realize that I was aging gradually. Mm. So I tried something. I decided to look away from everything. I have three children, 10, 8, and 2. So after coming back from work, I want to do the assignment. I want to cook. So I said, okay, if I'm not careful, by the time I drop dead, these people will move on with their life. Before. So I said, okay, I will look away. <laughs> so after making food, I just go to my room to go and lie down. Wow. After some time, I'll put the least I can do. I do my deed and leave the rest. Hmm. I cannot come and die now. Ah, my, my sister. Pray for anybody. <laughs> See, you, even to her, the truth is, you will still do. You will still hey. do. Uh, you know, some homes run. You don't have to do. Mm -hmm. You just have to say, do it. Do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. And that's even doing. Mm -hmm. You know, organizing. Yes, but then, and then but then some, of, have, some of us are even spoiled. Me, I cannot stand to see the place scattered. Though. I hey. think it's, it, there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. You're never ready. I cannot. So, You're never ready. I think it's, it's more of, <laughs> rather than doing it yourself, um, it's more of delegating. You want it done in a certain way. way. If you, you say, wash the plates, and you're still complaining that, no, don't wash it like this. Would the plates get washed at the end of the day? It's like teaching and, your child mm, to wash is, plates and saying you don't want to waste waste this yes, It's or, not or my don't want to waste, waste so, water. You see, waste this uh, dishwasher and water go waste. So my husband. So sometimes he'll tell me that is it that you want it done in a certain way mm. or you don't you want it done right? So I think that also had made me shift my mind from 
having my way and wanting things. And I think a lot of women would, even when you get somebody to do those things, you still micromanage. When you have a driver, you go see the, the driver now, go to that lane now. We can get to the destination. I'm not in that WhatsApp group. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, in my house, eh? You can, she helps me get meat. Let me give you a typical example. Meat sometimes. I'll say, I, Nima, I need, yes, I need chicken, I need fish and all of that. So she organizes for me. They send it to my house. Do you know the meat you got for me since last day? I did not see it with my eye. Mm. I did not check. That's how I can trust you to run. Because my head is constantly full with ideas, yeah. with other things yes. that will make me money to be able to pay your salary. <laughs> I cannot be dragging your work with you no, when I'm still doing my own work. So yeah. sometimes I don't see the meat. You have to call me when we, or when we come to the office. I, I, I sent the meat now. You've not seen it. I said, no, check. I just asked them. Has it I come? Mean, yes, good. please. Yeah. Use this to cook this. Use exactly. this to do that. Think... Use this to do that. So it, it took me, and I, I also learned this from my mom. Ah. My mom is a soft life woman. Ah, Jeje. She takes her life so easy. She doesn't want stress. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, micromanages to the teeth. Like, I fight with her constantly because she's getting older. She's looking very stressed, and she will not leave it. Even <laughs> Christmas, she will insist on cooking. You cannot be cooking when a chef is sitting down there. I'm here. My sister-in-law is another powerful cook. We are here. Mommy, leave the kitchen. No, she will want to come and see. Okay. Is the spice correct? Is mm -hmm. this so? I'm like, God. Can we continue like this, right? So I've seen that some people actually, and it's a problem that they may need to step back ah. from. I have to name wonder, I say because you have small body, that's why you're getting away with most of these things that you're doing. If you were, you know, very Obvious. framed, you know, by now you'll be having bags under your eyes because you are doing a lot yeah. of physical activities, right? So sometimes some of us can escape it. Not all of us can. Yeah. Now, how do we handle women to relax? Exactly. How do we advise women to relax, micromanage less, learn to remove your eye? Come on, eye. Tell us. Okay. <laughs> so I would say um, in my own house, I don't believe I'm a superwoman. I hate the superwoman title. Okay. But, I but have do you a, act like I a superwoman? I don't act like a superwoman because I don't even have the time. Okay. I do too many things. I'm schooling. I'm doing my PhD this year. I cannot be, that. I'll be thinking about the house. So there's no even time. Okay. So that one is out of it. But I can delegate as much as possible and segregate. This person is supposed to do this. Mm. This person is supposed to do that. And I'm not expecting my children to do things perfectly because I've also exactly. seen the progression. Uh -huh. So I bought a broom. I bought a brush. I have a long packer. I have a small packer. I have a mop upstairs. I have a mop downstairs. Mm. I decided to flood the house with tools so that they would see themselves that this, I did this like this. Oh, I'm getting better. Mm. I can now oh, do I this I prefer using this, this for this task. Uh-huh. Mm. Then, then um, one of the times that my daughter was sick, we went to, it was a very serious case. We were referred and she was on oxygen for a number of days. So there were a lot of strong cases that were also referred to the same hospital. Mm. And the consultant from Luth, before she started attending to us, she asked them to gather, how does women bring all of them one place? And she started talking to us, are you, you want to kill yourself? You. You have mentioned that you have. How many helps you have? Is your mother with you? Is your, you know? And she was really, really upset. She said, mm. almost all these things you people brought here could have been avoided. Wow. They could have been avoided. Maybe mm. nobody has told all of you before. And in my own case, I said, oh, my mom is in Kaduna. My mother-in-law is not also in Lagos. Who am I going to drag to help me when I have to go to work? I was doing about 7 to 5 a.m., 5 p.m., 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. At that time. At that time, you know? Wow. So it was, it was tough, but thank God for that counsel. It was hard, but... Trust me, mm. I decided if I don't get a help, I'll get a nanny. Those mama here, or what they call them. Mm -hmm. Just get someone mm. to assist you. If the person has to come and go, there's a risk to it. So sometimes they steal your things. Mm. Some other times they become saucy. Mm. Sometimes you don't see yeah, them. But learn to get help when you need it. And vacations also help. Yeah. So whenever I switch off, when, when you can't reach me, it's not should we try her on email or should we? You cannot reach me. I'm, I don't want to die early. Yeah. Let me okay. take we, some time. We have a caller, Olasukomi from me. Good morning, Olasukomi. Good morning, Good morning. Uh, for my uh, contribution, please, uh, Madam Nima, I don't know how I have to uh, make uh, something like this to discuss with you. Um, that will send me a DM stuff. on Instagram. Mm, send her a DM. Yeah. Okay. So do you have a contribution? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My contribution is uh, I actually want to commend you with this for your, for your good job. Thank because you. a lot of things are... You know, that it is called here. Yeah, I will say many men 
or many of them are not aware of some things, and uh, which actually leads to some care or some problem in the marriage. I, I have been a victim anyway, but um, coming to get to know some things as we discuss and um, no, I think it's, it's really going the long way, and I want to, I want to really give you, give it to you, and I want you to pay do more. So because um, if you're doing it, you have to eventually have a better society and a better, better country. Seriously, I must, I must say. This. I didn't, it was muffled. I didn't hear all of that. So let's let's coast down because we'll be wrapping up this uh, conversation soon on the sort of support we expect to give our partners when we notice that. Uh, some of the tasks are overwhelming. I like the fact that your husband steps in when he sees, you know, he can step in. But now that's kind words. That's all <laughs> yeah. he oh, he gives you kind words kind now. Words. He used to step in <laughs> physically <laughs> before. <laughs> Please, I'm fighting <laughs> for <laughs> Zibiri on this table. Hype me. I told him one day, if you hype oh me, God. finish. I go just go, go do wrong way, go, go mode. I go to the same way. But, that, but, but that's something. You know, kind yeah, words. That, no, no, he's a very kind person. Yeah, very that's something. Person. Mm. So, what, what, I, I will only say what I do for him. Mm. I hope he's watching. So, <laughs> <laughs> I notice when he's stressed. I know okay. when he has a business issue, I, I monitor him, you know. If I hear his conversation is high, uh, high tempoed, I, I listen in. I, mm. he's drop, I, <clears throat> I follow through. If he needs legal advice, I'll tell him, this matter doesn't concern me, but free legal advice. I'll give it to him mm -hmm. and you know, all of that. I do that. And then I know when to step back, whatever personal issues I have. Mm. So there was a time when my parents were, my dad was alive at the time. But I noticed I had not visited. And for me, it's a very serious issue. If I'm the only one visiting my parents part time, I won't visit his own. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I visit both of them regularly. Yeah. But I noticed that in a year. Yeah, I don't even commit to not seen my own. My own no, no. I would just slow down yeah. showing up at his parents house and so i noticed when he can't go because of maybe a new commitment there was this very terrible department he went to one time ah even the children said that is married to his computer wow you yeah. were draining his they blood draining so that's not when you want to bring in your conversation mm -hmm. and all the drama mm -hmm. you know when you know you already know your partner is not you are not insecure about all the things that will bother other people if it is work related i give him time then sometimes i was when I'm going to lock this door. Mm. They are going to marry your wife. Yes, yeah, so face fear. That's face like the panacea. Wife. Trust you me. No, I do that a lot. I lock. I do, I'll be like the kids. A do woman. Lock door. <laughs> marry <laughs> your wife. And pull the attention yes. back and all of that. Just ease things. Yeah, but Nima, do you know that it's easier to handle men's stress? They are they are quite easy to handle. Mm. It's just for you to understand your partner, and they are not as hard as we are. Because our own stress oh, comes from everything. not just the physical, the hormonal stress that is ah. happening within you. You're yeah. cranky. You are, so for them, it's, it's just know what they love to do. Uh, for me, it's very easy because he just wants somebody to listen. Quality time. I just give him that time, that attention. Ah, you're getting dark. Oh, you're stressed. What do I do? Banana. Then, like you said, Banana we lock scrub. the door. <laughs> Banana scrub bowel, lock the door. Let's talk to he will now sleep. By the time he wakes up, he is full strength, ready to work. So I must pay attention. So I pay at I do that for him. Nobody reminds me it's my job, actually, because if he's whole and high, he can go and make the money. So I do that. I monitor. I regulate. I make sure I change his diet for him as per time. Give him, he takes the food, for, food from the house. We plan it and love. just make sure that he's okay so that he's in a good place. And he comes home to his peace, mm -hmm. to me. Okay, so and that's very important. Uh, that's but how do we help women, most especially, in this stress okay. issue? I just wanted to tell your line. Okay. So I feel there are two things women need to stop if they want to help their husbands manage stress. Mm -hmm. And the first one is that statement of I told you so. Oh. It's a very, very tough statement that women should stop making. Mm. But sometimes we know. No, you can say it with your eyes. Even when you're saying it with your eyes, yeah, you, don't, you, 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 don't, you know, it's, there, there, are, there are times when I feel like screaming, <laughs> I told you this. You know, we are so intuitive. Sometimes yeah. we can't tell yeah. that yeah. if you go this way, that, you know, but when you say that I told you so, I mean, it requires like six months to If he doesn't listen, Sin at all. He no, needs he, to hear that he, I told he, you. He, no, he will come now. back. To, he will come back to you to say, Bash, leave that Babe, you want Some me. don't come back. Oh, Bash, <laughs> this that's man with ego. <laughs> if I have not seen it, I always tell my husband, if I have not seen it, I'm thinking. Yeah, thinking so it. now he's looking into my eyes. Yeah. So to be sure. Then number two. Toby, I'll let you speak. Number two. My husband is saying, hmm. 
prophetess. You know, go say, say you were right. Yes, so it's prophetess. Mm. Prophetess. Yeah. <laughs> then, then secondly is, um, let's all resist the urge to compare. Mm. Let's, let's resist the easy. urge. Easy. Easy. Yeah. Let's resist. No, sometimes one 170 one, one year old woman told me that um, every time she looks at her husband, she feels like asking him, Are you using your head at all? Hey, well, like, hey, what has happened to you? And I laughed. Tell me why are you laughing like this? I said, Sometimes I, I feel that way. Yeah. But, but I've learned to tell myself that this is how so many other people missed it. Because mm. we have this perfectionist tendency mm. of, I've got everything under control. Mm. Who even told us we have everything? Yeah. So Nobody. let's let's Life let's stop. Shock you. Uh, uh, let's stop putting that. Um, I, I started having a lot of peace in my marriage when I got off the. I've got everything under control. Mm. People are going to break. Let us break and pick ourselves up mm. and move on. I have nothing under yeah. control. It's the grace yeah. of God that's holding me, yeah. like a thread. <laughs> be going so Nima, do you agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> Nima, I told you so. For me, I have to say I told you so. I married to an Edo man. You know, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they know it all. They want to do all their own. So if anything you any decision you take fails, oh God, you are going to get it. Yeah. No, you're going to get it. Wow. I, if, it's either I mute totally and be like this. Like, I know you are thinking it. Because eh, if I do not say it doesn't mean it's mm. not in my head. Mm. But sometimes I have to tell him because mm -hmm. I have um, legal background. I don't know maths. I didn't do banking. I'm not an economist. I don't know these things. So when I, the area that I know. I cannot be advising you freely. Something mm. you should be paying consultancy for. Abi, and then you go and they're taking me for granted. Very opposite. Mm. You know, there will be consequences for some of these things. And when it happens, mm. you cannot then come to me and say, what can you do about it just like that? Uh -uh. <laughs> just, uh, sometimes I'll tell you, you have to pay. It's now it's not official. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. Not for free consultation. Okay, yes. so one of the things I think I've been able to do for myself is to know myself. I know when it is that I'm getting stressed. Mm. And so I communicate with my husband. So yesterday night, I was doing a lot of things. It was actually also helping. And so my baby, two-year-old, you know how it is that they always want to follow you everywhere. everywhere like, yeah. uh -huh. And so I now told my husband, I prepared his meal, gave my husband, like, please help me feed him. But the guy, he they run, he come meet me. I now told my husband, like, if this boy should follow me again, <laughs> I will lose it. <laughs> <laughs> and this women. <laughs> So you people know, you are among those people who don't know you marry your kids. So. I know, I don't have the energy for that. No, no, you marry your I, I don't, kids. I don't marry my kids. So. You have boys. I don't yeah. marry my kids. I'm boys. their mother. I mean, you know, Miriam yeah. has once. I, 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 I am thought, their mother. Miriam complains no, about her boy. Children. Okay. She's constantly his mother. With boys, I've learned. I have a girl and I have a boy. Mm. Thank God I had a girl first. Mm -hmm. With boys, you are their everything. Girlfriend, mother, everything. Until they grow, outgrow you. Mm. True. You know, if you train a boy like mother, <laughs> mother all the yourself. time, you become mother and yeah. you, you create a distance. My son, hey, if you see us, there are times when we are uh, the moral supporter, everything, 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 everything. It's good to be everything. If your but boy needs you, you pay him attention. But at some eh, point, you switch, know, just at some point, I need to rest too now. now. Yes, hey, you need to rest. So, so my, <laughs> once my boy got to four years, I said, tell him, can I take 10 minutes rest? Oh, you need to rest. My baby is oh, two years old. He would not say, mommy, when you hey, You can't tell him at that age. Get up. Mm. Do you get Make my food. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell him at this age. Yes. And I told him that the father should step in. Yeah. So I said, if you tell me, if this boy follows me one more time, I will lose it. As I can't go, he now wanted to follow me. The father said, come, 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 come. <laughs> <laughs> I actually put <laughs> fear too. It's important to yeah. know when it is that yes, as women that you need that break. Take it again. Yes. Very important. And you need to learn to use your words. Mm. I don't feel so good. good. I need Please my rest. Help me. Yeah. But a lot of women will take ask on for that. Help. Ask look, for help. And you don't know how to ask for help. But then again, see? even in the midst of using your words, know what to say. Uh, no, not when I'm yes. Not when I'm upset. <laughs> if I get to that point, <laughs> if I get to the point where I'm already <laughs> agitated, <laughs> whatever you see, you collect. So let me tell you how my own works. Um, I used to, when I come back home, I like to have a nap first. Then I wake up by 6 p.m. and work in the night. So they know my routine. Uh, the, when my husband is on leave, because he's on leave, they want to be around him in the room and everything. Once I come back, I eat. Hello, hi, hi, guys, how y'all doing? Blah, 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 blah. I tell my husband, I want to sleep. I'll tell him, please. He knows what to do because he knows that by the time I do not sleep that sleep, I'll come down with a headache and everybody will collect, including him. So he doesn't want to collect. 
You will say, I will lock the door now so that the kids want them. They will play their game. They will not disturb you. I'll lock you inside. I'll take the key. I'll go downstairs. So if they need anything, they'll come to me. So he does that for me. Mm. And by the time I now wake up by 6, 5.30, 6 p.m., I'm not ready to mommy Hello, everybody, everybody. How are you? To love everybody. To give them that time. Because I realize that you can't give from what you don't. an empty yeah, cup. Exactly. It's not possible. You're supposed to give from your overflow. And when I'm grouchy and agitated like that, I don't like the outcome. I don't like how I speak to my kids. And I need them you to also trust me. Play, really? Yes, they play. Oh, yes. So my, one of the... I don't get to <laughs> just go and sleep my husband. Mm -mm. When I come back, I give the kids their playtime. Mm. They will go and ride bicycle for two hours. It's oh, send them out. Football... My kids, when they do not have playmates, I will teach them those games to play with each other. I taught my boys table tennis. I thought, I don't have time. And my neighbor's kids too, everybody come outside and play. But so that the kids, they are noise they are outside. They are exhausted too. It's keeping them outside. It gives you time, free to time rest. for yourself. Mm. If I have to work, my son must go out. I want to stay with you. How do you stay quietly? If you cannot stay quietly, you have to go out. Mm. So I will throw his bicycle, give him something to do. Then we have a space, we have chickens, we have all of that. Find something to engage them. Mm. But allow your kids play. What I see that doesn't work is those people who have a, my kids must be indoors. Mm. Yeah. Kids are not, they are not yes, to, be, to be caged. Caged, mm -hmm. true, true. Especially boys. I like that. So I hope that with these few points of ours, <laughs> you have learned one or two you. and not, not confuse, confuse you. <laughs> <laughs> that you can actually avoid stress and look within your household, whatever works per time. The most important thing is to have a conversation with your spouse as the time goes. That's all we can take on this topic. When we come back, we move on to yet another hot topic. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. How does one handle one's personal hygiene? One's partner's personal poor hygiene? Because something as little as not closing the toilet lid in a home can cause a very great argument in the home. Some significant others are so poor in the hygiene units that one wonders the type of upbringing they had. Has this happened to you in your relationship? How did you handle it? Let's hear your thoughts on this. You can join the conversation and call us on 0810764179 and 0902416344. Or you can tweet us at TVC Connect using the hashtag YourViewOnTVC. Hmm. Is a body or something? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this topic is dear to my heart and my soul because a lot of people are smelling and they are not aware. Now, um, Sometimes when I, people, so as I grew up, my nose became more sensitive. It wasn't that sensitive when I was younger. But as I grew up, and I'm realizing that, is it that people are not aware that they are smelling? And how do we communicate to people that you need to pay attention to some small, small things? So we had a friend at one time who had this, but it wasn't that she had body odor, but it was just that when she sweats, you can tell that. There's no protection. The natural sweaty smell just comes out. And if she stays longer in the environment, it just goes around, right? So we're now deliberating amongst ourselves. How do we Do tell it? her? We yes, who will tell her uh, so that she doesn't take offense, so that she doesn't feel bad? And it's better, I felt it was better to tell her than to be talking behind her. It didn't make sense to me. So, Nami, they come push, go front. <laughs> so I went and I started very calmly. I said, Sister, I'm very happy for you that you don't have body odor. Uh, but I just noticed that um, when you sweat, like if we stay all day, you sweat from that um, 2 p.m. to the evening, there's this smell that comes out. So, what, what, what um, um, what's it called? What deodorants do you use? What's. And she said, ah, she wasn't using anyone. I was like, eh? That's How? She said, no, ah, she just uses a perfume and she goes off. 
I say, no now. That's the first thing you use. You can't even forget to use your perfume for the day. But once you use your deodorant, you take a bath properly, you use your deodorant, that sorts it. That's on one hand. She was grateful that I had that conversation with her. Then I started having helps. And some of my helps, even sales girls, come smelling. And I'm wondering, do they not have this information? Is there anybody around them? who could have told them, or maybe they didn't listen, or they didn't value the information and all of that. And I'll ask, what Jordan do you use? All I hear is, I don't use anyone. I'm like, how do you come out without using Jordan? That's one, no? For the men, it's worse. Because their own is, I think it's something biological. I don't have the stats to, <laughs> to show you, but I know that every uh, yes, male, compared to a female, the male smells, uh, Badder than the female, <laughs> even Badder. with animals, yes, because I remember that mm -hmm. anytime my father in law wants us to buy goat meat for him, he will say, <laughs> Buy me the male one. And I'll ask her, Why do you insist on the male goat? He said, Because it has the male smell. So I know that animals, even at that, and human beings too. So these men, and I'm wondering, does he not have a wife? Is his wife not perceiving this man? <laughs> Please, how do we help our people? We have mm -hmm. young boys we are raising, you know. Mm. Okay. Oh, smell every week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me, please. Uh, I just okay. have to say it. So, all right, BC. Hmm. Yes, so, let's not forget to link it to marriages and relationships. Uh -huh. You are so, dating somebody who's smelling. How do so, you I, I was just going to take us back there. That is, um, is this question for a spouse that you notice um, has some concerns, mm -hmm. and not just people? Because if it's anybody on the street, any random person, if you don't have a relationship with that person, and the person picks offense, the person might not be wrong. Because, mm. I mean, you don't know me. Even if you're going to say that, the way you put it down, your presentation, your approach, sure. will determine if I'm going to appreciate it or not, even if it is true. So, uh, and then it's true, to answer your question, this is true that there are certain adults who are adults and nobody has ever told them the smell. Mm. I told the teacher one time, in a very mild way, I even offered to buy one of her, but she said, no, I'll get it. Just tell me what you think I should get. And she didn't still get it. Ew. So I had to call her again. And this time I was like, okay, am I the first person saying this to you? She said, yes, the very first. Meanwhile, when you're passing by the corridor to her class, you start perceiving it. Oh, God. And then there are children in there. You know, so, so, so it's true that people smell. Now back to the issue of the spouse. Well, these things um, attend, you can attend to them from real, having real conversations. Because ideologies, the way some people grew up, mm -hmm. Not many families took time to raise, you know, this habit of uh, there's a particular smell, there's fragrance, there's so, so, so. Some people just grew up. No, they were, let, no some people grew up, they were not raised. They mm. just grew up. They just became adults. They were not raised to say, okay, this is what you use in the morning, this is what you use at so, so time. And for me, body odor <coughs> is not as offensive as mouth odor. Oh, God, don't even go there. Mouth odor is the major matter on the table. It's top on the list before body odor because I feel that one even takes a lot to correct than body odor. But, but it, if, if you are close to that person or the person has respect for you, the way you present it matters. <laughs> Some people are laughing behind the scenes. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I don't okay. think anyone is uh, better. The two I was for Thank someone you. who garlics up a lot. I know when I when I'm offensive, I'm very sensitive like that. I take garlic, so I'm always uh, wondering if I if I'm close to you and I see that you cringe, I'm like, uh, I'll sorry, I'm taking yes. I'll <laughs> do that. Sure, so yeah. you can see me. You can just see me. I'm like, I do that just to know if uh, it's offensive. And I grew up very conscious, just as you mentioned about my body. I went to secondary school. I had aunties who would get okay, towels, go and take it back. So it's, it, no, the body odor is not necessarily about, about deodorant. It's somebody just not caring for their body. about how their bodies are. Mm. So we were made to take baths three, four times. You'll find me sometimes when I was, from when I was 10, you'll find me sliding. There's this hill that they had, a sand hill. And we'll go and put something there and slide down. I would do it all day. By the time I come home, I'm full of sweat. Mm. Nobody will allow me in. And I do it to my kids now. I'll be like, as you're entering, just go to the bathroom. bathroom. I don't want to see you on my bed. You cannot be carrying chicken. Go enter my room. Enter my room. <laughs> you know, so you must give. And when you mm. grow up like that, you're constantly told, you cannot grow up into an adult and not care. I would sit in public constantly because I'm fully adult. There's no place for Breeze to be touching anything. So I would take my, take my time to the bathroom. 
Check okay. yourself. And Very important. I use deodorants. Mm. I, I did, my parents didn't even start deodorants for me. It was my teacher in, in school. Yeah. Uh, our VP there, Mrs. Ekobe, she would not allow anyone into the office then, except the person is fully, well, as young girls. If you, get out. Mm, get it's smelly. Oh, God. So I went to my told my auntie, what is deodorant? She said, okay, don't worry. <laughs> or my, it was Valentine's, and they gave me a spray bottle for that. And I, I it was an antiperspirant bottle. I remember those words as a young girl. But I know men, they don't care about these things. Yeah, why should help men, them now? Yes. No, if you, the wife how do you even no. marry him without helping him? Exactly. You don't smell him <laughs> before you marry him. You know, me, I get big mouth. I think that one is the one, is the one me should, I should control. I'm mouth talking anyhow. I, why do you smell this? Why do you smell? I, if, you, if I was breaking up or not accepting an, a proposal. As because a, of that, you say. You know that that's why. Mm. I would have said it. Mm. Why do you smell funny? You smell, you know, you would have, I would have helped you by telling you. You mm. will not leave me and I'll pretend that you do not have it. Mm. Because you have, it's, it's just the kindness of saying it. It's a sensitive yes. area. Yeah, yeah, it is. And the, the wickedness, I, for me, is not to say Not it. to say it, yes. I agree. Yes. So there was this young girl, very close relative of mine, who all her life didn't know why she smelled. She had body odor. It took her when she was 21, going through surgery to find out that she had a, a gestational problem with her intestines. Oh, wow. And so it was not for lack of hygiene. Mm. She just From constantly, small stress, she starts to smell. And nobody <laughs> knew it. That, you know, she had this twisted intestine. It was until she fainted at work, the surgery had to be done, that, you know, we found out what was what wrong with her. By the time this girl was an adult, she would bathe and have lime in her water. All those remedies that we have. Yes, lime local in remedies. Water, wash her armpits with lime, all the pores and everything. You know, and growing up, she, her self-confidence was affected because, mm. ask her, you know, she said, I know, what can I do? Oh, God. You know, so it's just the kindness <clears throat> of saying it. For some people, it's something you have to be conscious about if you must socialize. If you must mix with people, you must constantly worry about that. What I could not stand was those who thought, said it was a holy thing. Mbaso. To smell. Ah, no, sorry. Holy thing to smell. I hear them. I heard Muslim <laughs> yes, women yes. fully gabbed yes. say to me that yeah. it's a holy thing. Mm. Eh? So whoever I heard told that you before. That, no. You know, Cleanliness is next to godliness. So, there's a saying in my religion that women are not allowed perfumes. Okay. They, it meant strong perfumes. The Professor Islam said, for your home, because we are supposed to be well adorned at home, better than we even adorned when we go out. Dress well, clean up, you know, nice up at home. They're supposed to smell good. So the Professor Islam loved perfumes. He encouraged us using it. And it's a very sensitive debate where, whether mm. it's right or wrong. So some people tell you, yeah, yeah, my sweat <coughs> shows yeah. that I'm obeying God's orders. Mm. No, there's mm. no, mm. I don't agree. Mm. So yeah. let's come to okay. more social Okay, so in your opening, you spoke about men and women. Mm. Comparison. You know, yes. You did do research yes. for us. Yes, it's so serious. according to carenaturals.com, <laughs> men typically have more corny nail bacteria, Bagam. smelly bacteria in their armpits than women do. Bagam. Why? Men have thicker skin in their armpits Bagam. and sweat more fatty substances, which is the perfect recipe for corneal bacteria to breed. Bagam. So actually, yes, boys so was smell right. more. You were I right. I like the fact that you went to do the research for us. <laughs> and, okay. you know, but what are your thoughts okay, on this? Okay, so my thoughts on this is that there are some people that have a heightened sense of smell. I do. So my four-year-old, for instance, if anything is smelling Let in Let me pause house. you. We have a call. I'll come back to you. Williams from Delta. Good morning, Williams. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show. One of the first time I found us today. So uh, I want to contribute as regards this uh, personal hygiene. I just want to make it clear that we have individuals that they have this body order, but it's not their fault. They have issues with their internal organs. And when it happens like that, no matter how they take their bath, whatever deodorant they make use of, it would definitely come out. If you like, get like possibly like 10 to 15 different types of deodorant, the body odor will stick to them. Now, if you talk about the mouth odor too, same thing. That one can even be addressed. Because we have some, uh, what do you call it, uh, mouth wash that we can make use of. As far as it is concerned. Yes. So then, what we need to do now is to educate everyone, educate everyone as regards 
this uh, personal hygiene. True. Because lack of. Thank you so much. Education. Don't... Educate everyone on personal hygiene. Yes, let's. You know, so take yours. So. Some people that have a heightened sense of smell. So my, I say four year old before, it's five years old. He just celebrated his birthday. So um, if anything is smelling around the house, he would know. When mm. I'm saying nothing is smelling, if his younger brother has pulled, he's the one announcing for you. the home. Wow. Me, I feel no smell. So there are people like that. And so if you now get married to that kind of person that can smell from a distance. Beware and in your mind, you are wondering that, oh, I'm not smelling, but this person is actually... So it means that you should take a step back mm. and actually pay attention to that. So my husband would also say that, Ileoko, 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 that means that in your husband's house, even though they've told you some things somewhere, mm. somewhere, but here, mm. if I'm the one telling you that this thing is happening... I would not lie you to should, you now. You should actually pay attention yeah. to it, right? Yeah. And I think that is important for us, especially when we're married, or in a relationship with somebody, you would find out that that person is most of the time looking at your best interests. The person won't want to just talk you down and the person wants you to be better. Yeah. So if people that are close to you are the ones telling you that, I when you wake up in the morning, your mouth is a smell. But everybody and you're feeling like, smells in the morning. Just go and wash. I don't, I don't wake the, up with a mouth. Um, no, like, yes, oh, not really? everybody. Not everybody. Because oh. of the routine at night. Oh, so, okay. so not necessarily brushing. Sorry, uh, Toby. Not necessarily brushing. What do you do? Uh, do chewing sticks. Oh. And you do that because part of my uh, religion also is part time. Okay. I grew up, my father always had one everywhere in the wow. house. I do chewing sticks and I do, um, what's it called? This clothes. Clothes. Yeah. Perfect. Mouthwash. Instead mouthwash, of that mouthwash, yeah. Careful. So yeah. just have a clove bottle in yeah, the Yeah, just, just spray uh, your mouth. All of that. So how do we help people that are dirty in their it. marriages? Adam, to which you talk. Dirty. <laughs> okay. Go um, ahead. Then I also do think that for health reasons, so there are people that, just like Nicola said and you said, have health concerns regarding um, their, their smell. In that kind of instance, even when you speak to the person and say, how do you want to help beyond that scope of your smelling? And the person knows it's a health condition. So do you now say, okay, um, I would research with you, mm. find it out. Mm. And I also do think that when you're speaking with somebody regarding body odor, mouth odor, what, any kind of odor, the agbe color is important. The way you drop it yeah. is always, always the game changer. And most times when you tell people, they're actually grateful for it. Yes. But now we, they always think that, ah, before this person gets offended, most times they're always grateful for it. I know you will love me afterwards because all your friends have been talking about you no, behind what the you back. Do to follow up. Yeah. Yeah, one of my friends. <laughs> So she got me a birthday gift. And I thought it was because she wanted mm. me to know that my mouth was smelling. Hey, well. But she got me one toothbrush. As a birthday gift. My best friend, though, Enola, when we were, I think I was turning 21, she was 23. And she got me one toothbrush. Toothbrush, wow. I said, ah, how on earth? Who does that kind of thing? As in toothbrush, because you're a wicked somebody. I thought it was about mouth odor. And later she said, no, it wasn't about it. So it's what you do to follow up. If you told someone, person has a certain kidney, you follow up by gifting, mm. showing love. Mm. You know, two young girls that I'm dealing with right now, I've been buying their perfumes for years. And deodorants. Mm -hmm. Okay, very important. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so I want to add that this um, January season of fasting, it has been. Oh, everybody will be uh, smelling. It has yeah. been. In fact, we, we had one very funny oh, drama in church on Sunday where um, they had the argument of when you're fasting, can you chew gum? Can you take water? Mm. And somebody said, Can you me. talk? No, you. No, you. So talk when you now. speak. It takes away the... Spoken over time. Uh, close mm. mouth. Yes, you, close mouth. mouth. Yes. You, you can't control the way I'm going to speak. Yeah, be talking to yourself. Talk to so your mirror. You know, you Positive just, if you are watching in yeah. the office. Oh, in just your office. Be talking. Just, just be, be talking. talking. I talk to myself sometimes. Just be talking. We don't want to smell. So, so, we, so, so okay. mm. we agreed that um, whilst you, you put your mind on the spiritual issues, mm. it's important that you take care of your physical, physical. health. Very important. And um, when someone tells you there's something wrong, your first offense should not be with that of anger. Mm. Anybody. Yeah. I mean, it's very difficult to admit that. I had a boss in the office, in the bank, one time that said, Monke, what happened to you today? What happened today? And I, I was like, what happened? He said, no, shift. So I was just, thank God she, she was kind enough to explain because I was embarrassed at first. It was, mm. I went to her table to show her something, the V look, you know, Excel and everything. I said, what happened today? The next thing she said is, are you fasting? I said, yes, ma'am. And that time I, I felt, if you say you're fasting, you have spoiled the fast. Yeah. Oh. Trust me, the next day I had a real lecture. 
and I have been mindful of it ever since. So mm. we, we shouldn't pick offense when someone says there's something wrong. Then if mm. those people are close to us, I like what you said about getting um, the spray, the other one. Mm -hmm. And finally, Gifting for our them. husbands, oh God, every time my husband wheezes on the toilet seat and I see the wee, I'm like, oh, did you do this again? And say, is it because you're not a, a guy? You think that thing is easy? <laughs> well, there's a way it makes me cringe. Mm -hmm. So it's good to talk about it. It's good to, it's good to, um, to, to go practical. So in my character center, I have a male teacher who takes the boys once in two months to the restroom. Nobody will be there, one, one, and he's going to show the boys. Mm, then parents to began to tell me, what has happened? This thing I've been telling my child. So let us be practical. Let's not assume people learn these things yes. mm -hmm. as they grow up. And let's tell our, our no. partners. Mm -hmm. and my husband used to, he was using just perfs when we met. I came into the marriage with Roland, and at first he said, mm. But now, if he, he doesn't finishes, play with it, you say, bring your own out. How do you want me to go out without it? Mm. So, so it's important that, like she said, the presentation, mm. then your own lifestyle. I have friends who started using stuff because they saw it with me. And I have yeah. friends who made me to start using stuff. They never said it. Mm. But because they were consistent with it, mm. I saw the you importance. You picked up on that. Two young boys came to my house recently. And as I walked into my sitting, the children's sitting room, the smell it. Their mother is my friend. She was downstairs. I just came downstairs. I said, please, uh, your boy is Don't using deodorant. He said, I've been, hey, I've been telling them. I've been telling them this thing. I said, just come and perceive my oh, sitting room. Really I can't even pass that place. He said, I've been telling them. Now that you will tell them, they will hear it. Yeah, because yeah. I will threaten them that they cannot come to the business house they give. They're going to be smelling. As I came upstairs, <laughs> I said, hey, what's going on here? Why is my house smelling? You people are smelling. Did you use deodorant today? They were looking at me. I said, did you? They were teenagers, though. Did you use deodorant today? Go they were looking, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bathroom, go on, go on, go on. we have spare towel. Oh yeah, come to the man. I'm constantly fighting my son for, I don't spare him. And I don't say it nicely because he's my son. Mm -hmm. I insult him with it. Yes. You yeah, want to have a girlfriend? Yes, it's my son. Wow. You want to have a girlfriend? You will want to kiss your girlfriend? Will do. Hmm. Oh, he will hide his head in shame. I say, go now and brush your teeth. Go now and take him. I'm screaming because I see what it does to a lot of you. A lot of young mm -hmm. men do not understand that they are smelling. Mm. But we must keep telling them. We must keep helping them. Don't wear yeah, clothes no, that you have yeah, worn no, no, two days, three days for men, because you are managing clothes. Worse but we have to go now. Worse for girls. Thank you, beautiful ladies. Mm. Mm. That is how we wrap up the show today. Uh, I hope you guys had fun and I hope our viewers learned a thing or two mm. from our conversation. So we'll see you again next week. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye now. Bye.